It has all the makings of a great fad. Silly bands, inexpensive rubber bands, cut in fun and funny shapes. They're the hottest new trend out there. First seen on Southern schoolyards, they now adorn the wrists of rock and roll royalty. And for Jeremy Hubbard, well, that is a sign of the time. Not since the implant as a silicone accessory caused this much buzz. Celebrities are sporting them, school children fighting over them. They've been banned in some classrooms. And just today, Justin Bieber came out with his own line of them. You can imagine the insanity that will follow. These are silly bands, the $100 million business behind this fad. We're definitely the brand leader and we're the creator of the craze. You know, with every day there's a new knockoff brand or a non-branded Silly Bands knockoff that's out there. Robert Croak is the CEO of Silly Bands, which are, as you may have already noticed, glorified rubber bands. They take on different shapes like animals when they're not stretched around your wrist. At the company's Ohio headquarters, they can't package them fast enough. Stores are selling out, parents asking to be put on waiting lists. Just how crazy is this craze? Silly Bands has a Facebook page with nearly 400,000 fans, and there's a slew of YouTube tributes to the unusual wristbands. Silly, silly, silly bands sweeping all around the land. Silly, silly, silly bands, you put them around your hands. Silly, we sat in, along with the company Dog, on a brainstorming session about future Silly Bands products. They're trying to find a way to keep the hysteria going. With Silly Bands coming out really strongly a year and a half ago, right when the economy was kind of at its low, for $5 for 24 Silly Bands, it's, it's a really good value. It seems to be the rare, inexpensive toy that parents can not only afford, but kids actually embrace. They collect them and trade them at school. And in just a short time, Silly Bands has secured its place in fad toy history. That history starts way back in the 40s with the Slinky. Over 300 million have sold, a billion dollars worth. The 50s brought the hula hoop. A hundred million of the hip swiveling toys flew off the store shelves in 1958, bringing in nearly 200 million bucks in the first year alone. Fast forward to the 70s and that inexplicable fad, the pet rock. Dumb idea, not to its creator. It made him $15 million in six months. What about those lovable Cabbage Patch Kids from the 80s? In 1983, sales were at $60 million. Two years later, $600 million. And the Cabbage Patch Kid begat the Beanie Baby in the 90s. By 98, sales exceeded $1 billion. The one thing that you run into, I think, with toys like this is that they're fads, right? Just as quickly as they take off, they can fizzle, can't they? Whether it continues to grow is based upon a number of factors. Is there continued innovation in the product? As long as it doesn't get stale, it can still grow. Jerry Storch is the CEO of Toys R Us. It's his job and the job of his executives at the toy giant to pick which toys will stick. Few turn into long-term franchises. So how do you get a toy to outlast a fad? You do have, have products which are collectible, they have character, they have personality, and they have something a little special, a little wow factor, a little technology, and, and that cuddly cuteness. There are a million examples of that, toys with an X factor. It doesn't hurt if famous people like them too. Like with Silly Bands, Shakira is wearing them on her new CD cover. In fact, celebrities started showing up in Silly Bands a few months ago. Stylish celebrities, squeaky clean celebrities, even bad boy celebrities. Aside from the famous fans, there's also something new that helped the wristbands take off. A strange, viral, geographic explosion. They first took off in, of all places, Birmingham, Alabama, late last year. The craze stretched up the East Coast, gradually to New Jersey and New York, before moving west. Children notoriously have a short attention span. But if silly bands are just a fad, how much longer will they last? Some toy experts give them six more months, tops. The company isn't sitting around waiting to find out. They're hard at work on a board game, video games, a Facebook application, all based on that glorified rubber band. I'm Jeremy Hubbard for Nightline in New York.